Hi guys, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Today's video is the most perfect timing ever because we are talking about how to prevent bloat during the holidays. So if you're with your family or loved ones and you're watching this video and there's lots of amazing tempting food and snacks all around you, watch this entire video and I'm gonna give you some great tips for today and the rest of the holiday season so that you can prevent bloat and stay fit. Okay, so in today's video, I wanna share with you five of my favorite snacks snacks, drinks, meals, they kind of all fall under the snack category, but things that can basically prevent bloating. So the reason I wanted to do this video is because of a few things. Number one, it's super common to indulge a little bit during the holidays. You're around people you haven't seen in a while. Everyone's making really great food. And a lot of it's really cultural and traditional, but of course this is why people end up gaining that holiday weight. And this is why it's so hard to get it off in the new year. And it's funny because the new year is supposed to be when you want to start fresh and have this like nice clean slate, but oftentimes we start it not so great. And we have a lot of like backtracking to do and we don't even get to start at our normal weight. So I thought it was really important to share some things that you can leave out for yourself, for your friends, family, kids, and they're all really yummy snacks, things that everyone will like, but they won't totally break the bank and they'll keep you healthy. I also tried to really focus this video on snacks because I feel like it's really hard to avoid certain meals during the holidays because coming together for a meal with your family or friends is just part of the holiday fun and tradition. You don't wanna miss out on that. You know, living a healthy life and following this wellness path doesn't mean that you have to cut out all these things that are really special and that are gonna build memories for you. So if you wanna to stick to the meals with our family and not make everyone eat exactly how you wanna eat, let's try to focus on the little snacks that you can control, things that you can do throughout the day and even share with the people around you that can kind of overcompensate for the delicious meals you're gonna have. So I've got five snacks ready to share with you guys. These are all really amazing. They all have their own little benefit as to why they help bloating or weight loss. So the ingredients I'm using here can be found on Thrive Market. You might've seen me mention Thrive Market either on my Instagram or on my YouTube. I talk about it a lot because it's where I order pretty much all of my groceries. It's kind of like a one-stop shop for um, cleaning supplies, wellness items, superfood powders. You can get everything online. It's really easy. It's all shipped to you. I feel like we are in that era where we want everything delivered. We don't want to leave the house as much anymore because it's just more convenient. The other thing is that it's just like getting any other health food item you'd get at a health food store, but the prices are like 30% cheaper. So sometimes you think that's weird because how can it be so much less expensive? Are you cutting quality? Are you cutting taste? But you're really not like I personally use it all the time and it's just that good. So any of these items you want, I'll make sure to link below this video and you can find them on Thrive Market. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna start with is a protein shake. Now, this sounds like your kind of basic snack and this doesn't have to be if you are working out. You can do this with whether you are or aren't working out, but it's a specific kind of protein I wanna talk about and it's pea protein. And it's also really clean, like literally the only ingredient in here is yellow pea protein. So protein powder is supposed to be this snack that's healthy, that's supposed to help us with our fitness goals, but too many times it's packed with other ingredients, sugars, gums, um, fillers, sweeteners. So I just have a really strict rule on if I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna do it all the way. Like I don't want to slightly sacrifice what I'd normally eat and not even get the full benefit out of it. So if you're gonna do it right, just do it all the way. So I really like pea protein because it's the most easily digested. You know that I eat a plant-based diet. I highly recommend using uh, plant-based protein. Whey protein can just cause a lot of breakouts, a lot of bloating. So even if you're not fully vegan, I do recommend trying a plant-based protein. This one is just an organic pea protein. That's all there is to it. Now it's not flavored, so that's gonna be what you're in charge of. But I think this is the easiest thing ever because all you have to do is add a half a banana, a banana, maybe you wanna add a little bit of stevia, your own sweetener, and it will just take on whatever taste you add to it, and it's great. So you're just like starting with a clean base, and then you can make it your own. So I also like this because it's full of protein. It's gonna keep you full. It will help you stop snacking on all the other things that are gonna be surrounding you throughout the holidays. And you could have this as a meal replacement. You could have it as like a midday snack. Sometimes I like a protein shake like between lunch and dinner because that's my biggest break. Like I'll have lunch around noon, dinner around seven. So in the middle, if I want a snack, sometimes a protein shake is perfect. I'm gonna show you guys how to make it because I did notice from my other videos of the what I eat in a day, you don't like when everything's pre-made. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly how easy it is to make this protein shake. I'm gonna get my blender and bring it over here. So this is just a really basic shake. I'm not making this too fancy. 
I also don't measure the almond milk. Um, I mean, if you have a Vitamix, I'll, I'll link my blender below here because a lot of you guys are asking. If you have a Vitamix though, or a lot of other blenders, they tell you how many ounces is on here, so you can just start with it. I like to start with the liquid first. I do about eight ounces. Sometimes I'll also do a blend of almond milk and water. It just depends on my mood that day. But I like to start with the liquid first because then the protein powder doesn't get clumped up like in the, in the blades of the blender. So this one is just two scoops. And again, two scoops is the serving size. If you're tracking your macros, go ahead and follow it and put it into my fitness pal or whatever. But if you're not, you can make this your own. Like if you try it and it's too heavy for you, then maybe just go to one and a half scoops or one scoop. But I definitely recommend at least one to one and a half because it, it's supposed to fill you up. That's the point. I either do a frozen banana or a fresh banana. If you want it like a little more cold and icy, you can pre-freeze your bananas. If you don't have a frozen banana and you don't have time, then you can just do a regular banana and add some ice. Or you don't even have to have it icy. If you want more of like a creamy, smooth, like and it's not as cold, that will give you a different texture too. I'm going to add a little bit of ice because I like my smoothies to be a little more cold. These are my little ice trays. I should link these too, but they're perfect for water bottles um, because they're really thin and you can drop them into a water bottle. That's why it's a weird shape. And of course, cinnamon because I add cinnamon to everything a lot. It helps regulate your blood sugar. It adds flavor. It's just a no-brainer like spice. Okay, that's it. A few moments later. That's it. With any kind of smoothie or protein shake, greens are always a freebie. So if you ever want to add spinach, kale, green powders, that's all up for grabs. I just want to teach you the base of this snack, which is the pea protein. Mm. So good. The banana is kind of enough on its own, but try a little bit of it. I recommend tasting it in the blender and then like adding, if you want a little bit of stevia, if you want a little more banana, if you want more flavor, you can make that your own. All right, so snack number one is done. We've got our pea protein smoothie. Let's go for snack number two. So the next thing I wanna share is another drink since we started with the smoothie. Let's go on to the next drink. And this is basically a healthy version of hot chocolate. So we're gonna make some hot cacao with almond milk and a little bit of peppermint oil. There's a few things on this. Number one, it's way less calories than a normal hot chocolate. That's the first benefit. Second is that it's way healthier, meaning there's also so much added health benefit. So sometimes we can find something that's less sugar, less calories, and you know not as fattening, but not necessarily better for you. This one covers both, so it's really amazing for you. Cacao is super, super high in antioxidants, amazing for your skin, amazing for your heart. And then we're also gonna add some peppermint oil, and that's gonna kind of give us that peppermint mocha hot, besides the mocha, the peppermint hot chocolate vibe, but also peppermint oil is really soothing on your stomach. It helps relax your stomach muscles. It can help prevent bloating and improve digestion. So this is kind of um, a triple threat hot chocolate. That's what I like to call it. So this one's really easy. You're gonna start with a pot and just warm up your plant-based milk. I like to use almond or coconut. You can really use any kind of plant-based milk you want. So shake up the almond milk first, add a little bit to your pot. What's funny is I'm like very analytical when it comes to anything, especially cooking. And whenever my mom will give me a recipe for something and she'll be like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, it frustrates me to no end because I want to know exactly how much I'm adding. But that's kind of what I'm doing on this recipe. And the reason is it's really all to taste and there's such minimal ingredients that it's not that big of a deal. So I just poured in some almond milk, pour as much as you want. Like if you want two mugfuls, maybe pour it into two mugs and pour it on the, st on the stove and that's, that's the amount you need. Okay, next I'm gonna grab my cacao powder. I would recommend starting with like one tablespoon, mixing, mixing it in and letting it dissolve and then just going from there because you don't want this to be too much cacao or else it can taste a little bit bitter. Actually, I'm doing about three fourths a tablespoon. This is all it looks like. I'm literally just mixing in cacao powder and almond milk just so you don't think you're missing over anything over here on the stove. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of stevia. So you definitely need to add a sweetener to this because cacao on its own, remember, is zero grams of sugar. It's definitely bitter, but as soon as you sweeten it, that's what makes it taste like chocolate. Like chocolate is just cacao, a little more processed, but then added with like sugar. So we're gonna sweeten it with stevia. I like using liquid stevia for this. You could use monk fruit, you could use a little bit of honey. Honey might give it a little bit of a weird flavor, but this is totally your call if you wanna make it your own, but you do need a little bit of sweetener. So I'm gonna add like one full drop of stevia. And then I'm gonna add two tiny, tiny drops of peppermint oil because this is really strong tasting, so you don't need that much of it. I'm gonna add a little more almond milk. If it's not dissolving that well, if it looks like it's a little chunky. Another thing you can do if it doesn't dissolve perfectly well, because 
when we're taking things in their like pure natural state and really in their raw form, they're not always gonna be perfect. Like a lot of times the reason why a hot chocolate packet will dissolve perfectly is because it's processed to process to make it like really convenient and easy and like great for the person who's gonna eat it. But things in their natural state aren't always perfect. They have little imperfections. So even if it's not perfectly dissolving, but you want to add that much cacao, you could use a little strainer and that's a simple fix. So it doesn't have to look so perfect. It just has to taste amazing and be good for you. So the cacao actually dissolves on its own. So even if it looks chunky at first, as it starts to heat up, it ends up dissolving on its own. This is it. This is the consistency. I'm gonna try a little bit of it, even though it's really hot. Let's see. Oh my God, it's so good. Oh, the peppermint just makes you feel very holiday-esque. You guys have to try this. I'll put the exact recipe below, but it was really just a half a dropper of stevia and two tiny little drops of peppermint oil. And that's it. Got your healthy hot chocolate. All right, so third snack we're gonna make is a really healthy, easy trail mix. Trail mix is one of those things that I think could be the biggest mistakes for a lot of people because it's like a healthy snack, but it's so unhealthy. I feel like the majority of trail mix is terrible for you. So not to be dramatic, but let me just go through why. Number one, usually the nuts and seeds that are in there are roasted, cooked in oil, heavily salted, or candied. All of them are just like, there's so much added to it to not make it in its pure form and to add salt. I mean, salt number one is the biggest thing that can cause bloating because water follows salt. So anything you eat that has a lot of extra sodium could make you bloated. Number two, they're like roasted and then cooked in a lot of oil and we don't need excess oils. Oils can be healthy when they come from a really healthy natural state, like the oils found in avocado or maybe like a cold pressed olive oil on a salad, but you don't want nuts cooked in oil. That's not very healthy. And then a lot of times they're candied and then you've got the dried fruit in there, which just, they usually add sugar. You don't need more sugar on fruit. It's good on its own. So just a lot of different reasons why it's not that great. Also, they add M&Ms, chocolate, which probably has dairy. I feel like I've given you guys the point. Trail mix is generally not healthy, but you can make your own trail mix and it's so easy. It's not a big deal. I wanted to show you one of my favorite combos that I like. So I personally love pecans and almonds. These are two of my favorite nuts. Um, you can choose whatever you want. The biggest thing here is that they're gonna be raw, unroasted, and unsalted. Those are the three things we look out for when you're getting any kind of nut or seed because number one, you're gonna make sure there's no additives and number two, you're gonna make sure you're getting the most benefit out of it. When we roast them, we actually lose a lot of the nutritional value and like I said, if I'm gonna eat healthy, I at least want all the credit for it. I don't wanna try to eat healthy and then not get all of the benefits I can. You can put these into a bowl. I just grabbed this bowl because I don't have anything else handy right now, but I'm literally just add them in. And we're gonna add some goji berries. So I'm usually the one who says to avoid dry fruit because I think that if you're gonna eat fruit, the water content is such an important part of it. And it's a little too concentrated in sugar, but there's very few dried fruits that I really like. And one of them is goji berries. They're so, so high in antioxidants. They're like this powerhouse that I think that when you have them once in a while, it's worth the sugar because you kind of always, I'm a pharmacist, so you know, science background, you always do risk versus benefit. What, you know, what, which one outweighs the other? And in this case, I think the benefit outweighs the negatives. So I like to add a little bit of goji berry. Bag is almost done because I eat it a lot. They're a little bit stuck together. Clean hands, my hands were clean before this video. <laughs> And this is something you can just leave out in the house. You know, you just like to have little, instead of a candy bowl or instead of any other trail mix, people will definitely snack on this. And it's also gonna be a conversation starter because not that many people, not, not that many people, but a lot of people don't know so much about goji berries. It's not the most common dried fruit. So if you leave this out, it's a little more exotic than like your standard trail mix. It's healthier and you're not compromising taste. So that's it. And you can also throw these in a bag out the door and go. Oh. Mm pecans are underestimated. Let's move on to snack number four. So the next thing I wanted to share is oatmeal. And yes, this can technically be eaten for breakfast, but it's also a snack. I think we don't take advantage of oatmeal as a snack enough. I usually like it midday or whatever. It's just a really easy, quick snack. It's really healthy. It's great for kids, for anyone. But one thing I like to do is really dress it up and make it more fun and yummy than just like a plain old oatmeal. Cause that's also why I feel like a lot of kids are turned off from it because it just seems too healthy and gross maybe. But one thing I think always makes something taste better is adding like a crunch. Let's say you're getting oatmeal and you're adding like nuts or seeds or granola. Like if you go out to like a Starbucks and get it, but adding too many different foods into one meal can really, really cause a lot of bloat. 
That's why I think it's important to find little substitutes. And like I said, you might think you're eating really healthy with oatmeal and not understand why it bloats you. But when you're mixing in all these different things like heavy nuts and seeds, maybe dried fruit at, like that has a lot of sugar in it, and then this like oatmeal that's full of fiber, a lot of times it just doesn't combine well. So a really easy thing to do is just add oatmeal, cook it with water, however you like, and then top it with cacao nibs. So cacao nibs are basically cacao in the form of little, almost like they seem like little hard candies. They're crunchy, but there's absolutely no sugar. It's the exact same thing as eating cacao, so you're still getting all the amazing benefits. And while cacao powder on its own tastes a little bit bitter, cacao nibs don't because of the form they're in. When you're just eating a powder, like on its own, it's kind of gross, but when it's in a crunch, if they're so little, you don't really notice it. Then when it's mixed in with other things, it's really just there to add a little crunch and a boost of antioxidants. So I like topping it with cacao nibs and a little bit of coconut oil. I like doing just a touch of coconut oil because sometimes having a little bit of coconut oil can make it smoother, it makes it feel creamier, and it also kind of helps keep you regular, if you know what I mean. And a lot of times bloating can be caused from that. So this combo together with a little bit of seasoning is really, really good. I normally prefer cooking oatmeal on the stove or sometimes I even like to use quinoa's oatmeal, but for this video, I'm just doing it quickly so we don't get into too many minutes. I'm literally just like estimating. If you wanna know measurements for oatmeal, it's one half oatmeal to double a two times that amount in water. So a half a cup for one cup of water. That's like the base and then depending on how thick or thin you want it this video, I'm just gonna throw it in. I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg just to make it extra holiday-esque. I'm gonna throw it in the microwave for about a minute. A few moments later. Okay, the oatmeal is done. Now we're just gonna top it off with some cacao nibs. This is literally what it looks like. Little bits of chocolate. Just the smallest amount of coconut oil because it is still an oil. We don't wanna go overboard. You could even top it with like a little bit of almond milk. And if you want a little sweetener, we'll just do like a dash of stevia. I wouldn't recommend adding fruit to this. Um, I always recommend eating fruit on its own. It does not combine very well with other foods because it's digested so quickly. But if you are gonna add fruit, a banana would be the best because it's slower digested than other fruit. So it won't get too backed up in your stomach while you're eating the oatmeal. Here's what it looks like. Try a bite. Mmm. I love that crunch. Honestly, you don't even taste the cacao nibs. Like, no bitterness. Just has a little crunch to it. <laughs> so we have snack number five now. This one is like a homemade cookie slash granola bar slash bite. I thought this was important to add because number one, it's very, very easy and fast. And I know that the holidays are a really crazy busy time. Number two, sometimes we need something sweet. Like we're having all these like hot cocos and you want like a cookie and there's so much dessert around you. You're only human, like we're gonna wanna give in sometimes. So why not make this amazing option that you can have instead because it literally tastes like a cookie. It's full of protein, it's full of fiber, it's gonna keep you full, it's gonna satiate that like sweet tooth craving. So let's just get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is toast the quinoa. So first of all, I really like getting pre-sprouted quinoa. It just makes your life easier. When it's pre-sprouted, it's more easily digested, which means less bloating. And this one's found on Thrive. Um, and we're gonna toast it. And I know that might sound kind of weird, like is that confusing, does it take a while? You literally just put it on the stove, put it on medium heat, and once you kind of hear it start crackling, you see it browning a little bit, that's it. You don't need any oil, very easy. We do three fourths a cup. Put it on like medium heat. Just let it sit like evenly over the pan that you're using and just let it start cooking. While that's cooking, we're gonna do the rest of the ingredients. The next thing is two cups of instant oats. Now you are going to be eating this raw, so instant is better. You don't wanna use like steel cut oats for this because if you ever tried steel cut oatmeal, it's really, really hard and like crack a tooth. So I wouldn't like that raw. Two cups. Next, we're gonna use two thirds cups, two thirds of a cup <laughs> of unsweetened coconut shreds. So I like using coconut shreds versus coconut chips because we're gonna roll these up into like little bite-sized balls and sometimes the shreds are just, uh, sometimes the chips are too long. They don't fit in there perfectly. So I kind of like these to blend in. So two thirds cup. This is one third I'm using, so I'm doing two of these. 
Nothing much going on with the quinoa yet. I'm still waiting. Now we're gonna use 3 4th cup almond butter. So this is a part where you can make this your own. A lot of people like using peanut butter. I really like using almond butter normally because I feel like not that many people know about almond butter, especially kids. And I know peanut butter is like the traditional one to use, but peanuts in general aren't the healthiest. They're really, really susceptible to mold just the way they grow. And mold toxicity is a thing we should all watch out for. It's just not the healthiest. So almonds are so much better for you. I personally like using almond butter. For this one, for the holidays, I thought it would be kind of fun to use like a chocolate hazelnut almond butter. Normally I don't use this, so this is a little more sugarier process, but not everything has to be perfect. It's still cleaner than any other snack you're gonna go find like on a shelf or a cookie that you don't know what they put into it. So ideally use almond butter. For this recipe, for this video, we're trying the hazelnut butter. So I'm gonna scoop out 3 fourths cup that in. Next we're going to use a third cup honey. I do recommend using really high quality. Manuka honey is the best. It's a little more expensive, but you know, get more bang for your buck. Cleaner, more antibacterial properties, especially this, since this is like a holiday snack. It's good to also keep us healthy. All right, that's one third cup. I can hear, you probably can't hear this, but the quinoa is like toasting behind me. I'm gonna grab it and just show you what it looks like right now. So as you can see, it's like browning a little bit and you can smell it cooking too. I like using a nonstick pan for this, but it wouldn't stick to a regular pan anyway. Probably do this for like a few more minutes, whoops, <laughs> until it's a little more browned. Next is a half a cup of chocolate chips. I definitely recommend vegan. I love Lily's because it's sweet and stevia, so you're not getting any more added sugar with this. By the way, I also got the Lily's Dark Chocolate on Thrive, so they don't only have their own brands. They carry other brands too because this has been my favorite dark chocolate for years. I can't give this one up, so I'm glad I can find it on there too. Okay. This one gets a little messy. Sometimes you need to taste test the chocolate. Okay. That's done. You saw basically this cooked in the amount of time that we added the other ingredients. That's it. Now I'm going to roll up my sleeves a little <laughs> and start mixing this. So this is a little sticky at first. Really mix it really well. And then once you have it like all combined, basically what we're going to do is just roll it up into little balls, put it on a plate. You can put it on a pan if you want, and we're just going to stick it in the fridge. That way it'll make them harden. You can put it in the freezer if you want them to like harden up faster but they're also ready to eat right away. It's more just making sure that they stay formed in like a little ball. It smells so good, you guys. The combo of like the coconut and even just toasting the quinoa, even though you're not cooking anything with it and it's just quinoa, it just smells good. I don't know how else to explain it. And the chocolate. Okay, so this recipe is literally done. All we have to do now is roll it up into little balls. This sweater probably wasn't the best thing to wear for this video, it's like the biggest sleeves. Make sure your hands are washed and clean. Kind of just, you know what would be actually really good for this is an ice cream scooper, which I don't have because I don't eat ice cream that often, but that's it. Okay. And they're a little bit messy at first, but once they harden in the fridge, they'll stay more formed. So one more thing just to point out again, this is a raw recipe. We did toast the quinoa like for five, 10 minutes, um, but everything else is raw. So it's also kind of, kind of something cool to introduce to your friends or family if they think that a raw diet is disgusting. It is not because you've got this delicious snack right here. You can cover it with foil or put it in a Tupperware or whatever you want. You literally just pop it in the fridge like this and they harden up. Or like I said, you can eat it now, but it's just not fully formed. So that's it. Okay, so that was it. Those were my five snacks for the holidays. What I eat for the holidays to prevent bloating. I kind of give you guys a cool variation of like, smoothies to drinks to dessert to everything so i hope you guys enjoy those and like i said everything that i use in this video can be found on thrive market i'll make sure to put um in the description all the links to every ingredient i used and you can also use my code to get 25 percent off and a 30-day free trial thrive market's really cool if you guys haven't checked it out i highly recommend it especially if you're trying to get healthy and feel like you don't have enough time, like it's inconvenient to go to the grocery store to find all the things you need. It's just so easy to do it all online. And you can even search by category, like you can search for a vegan diet, for paleo, for any kind of like allergy you have. It gets really specific on the website and you can like save your settings. 
save all your info. It's just kind of a time saver and really helps you stay healthy for the new year and the holidays. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think. Like I said, leave all your questions in the comments. The first 50 or so comments are the ones I really try to prioritize because I really like to go on there right when I put the video up. So if you want your question answered, make sure you turn on my notifications. That way, as soon as the video goes up, you can watch it get your thoughts out. Let me know what questions you have. I'll answer them. We can hang out in the comments and then I'll make sure that I'm helping you in any way I can. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.